Welcome to today's webinar. The topic from today's webinar is calculation of reinforced concrete slabs in RFM6. My name is Alexander Meyerhofer. I'm responsible for the development and coordination of the reinforced concrete design in RFM6. Today, I will be your host of the webinar and answer your questions together with Juliane. My two colleagues can introduce themselves. Yeah, hello, also from my side. My name is Adrian. I'm also part of the concrete team. Um, yeah, and I, I will uh, show you the presentation in the program today. Yeah. Hello and welcome also from my side. Um, my name is Juliane stopper -Akta. I'm working in the Dubai support and I'm also supporting the developers of the add-ons concrete design and geotechnical analysis and as Alexander said I will be in the chat to ask answer your questions yeah. That's okay thank you um, please turn off your cameras so that the participants can see their entire screen uh, for those persons who take part the first time today, some organizational tips. On the right side of your screen, you can see the control panel and uh, with the red arrow, you can hide or open the control panel. And if you want to write a question to us, uh, please enter the question here in, the, uh, in, in this field and uh and send it to us if you want uh, if you will try <coughs> we will try to answer the, the the question during the webinar if there will be too many questions um and we don't quite manage it you will receive an email with the answer after the webinar you can also watch the recording of the webinar um afterwards and send us any question by email to the address info at blueball.com. Now we come to the content and for this I hand the screen to Adrian. One moment. So Adrian. It's your stage. You should see my screen now. Yes. Yeah. So, um, oh, there's a German word left uh, uh, for the today's content. Um, I will start uh, with the uh, static structure uh, based on the building model. Uh, so, for data mining internal forces, before the um, design or before the uh, uh, calculation of the required reinforcement for ultimate limit state and the visibility. And then I um, will define um, an existing reinforcement and will adapt this um, existing reinforcement with the automatic design um, for the reinforcement. And then I will go to the design checks uh, for UAS, for example, punching and uh, design design checks for the visibility, for example, the crack right. Um, and then uh, at the end, I will uh, show the calculation of the deflection in correct state, including creeping and shrinkage. And the last point will be an outlook about upcoming features in the program. So I will um, switch to Orphan to our today's structure. This uh, structure um, of, of, the, of today's webinar refers a bit to an older RFM5 webinar about uh, reinforcing um, slabs and calculation um, uh, or deflection calculation um, for slabs. Uh, this older webinar was a 2D uh, position today I show uh, or we show this uh, based on a, a 3D structure. This 3D structure got three stories. 
the slabs are here in the uh, right area um, are cantilevered. Um, I have applied some simple but yeah typical uh, loads, uh, a dead load, and some live loads here. And in the beginning, I will use the building model, so the add-on building model, um, to consider the slabs not in the uh, 3D um, structure, uh, but uh, some kind uh, like separated in a 2D uh, structure. Before or in the beginning, I have to activate the building model uh, add-on. You find it here. And at this point, I also will activate the concrete design because uh, this add-on we will need uh, afterwards. And I agree. With um, activating the add-ons, the input uh, or the possibility for the input in the navigator changes. And I have here an additional entry called building model. And um, I will start with the with the definition uh, for the building model. So I uh, first of all, I have to create um, building stories. I can do it. Uh, I can do this by hand, uh, or I can use this uh, automatic function that the program automatically um, recognizes the the stories and generates them. This is this button here. Um, and then I have to choose what I would like to or how I would like to calculate um, with this uh, building model. And there is one option regarding the floor, model, um, floor modeling. And there I have to uh, choose rigid diaphragm. Um, this means um, that for the walls or the walls and the columns are, con are connected uh, via rigid diaphragm and the uh, um, slabs are yeah, uh, considered as some kind of a 2D um, position and for this or as a 2D uh, structure. It's not uh, exactly a 2D structure, but it behaves uh, like this. And uh, for this um, slab, I have to choose how the uh, attached walls and columns should be considered. So they are considered as uh, nodal support and uh, supports and line supports. Uh, but here there's an option how this should be done. So uh, for the nodal supports, I can consider this the default uh, option at the moment, consider them as fixed supports or fixed height supports. But I would like to consider uh, them as um, elastic um, supports or with, with spring constant um, according to the uh, member type which is attached. So the program uh, recognizes which uh, kind of column or which column um, is connected. And depending on the material and the cost action, the program uh, calculates the the, um, the stiffness. And this uh, for the walls, um, it's the same. I can choose a la uh, elastic wall, and then I have to uh, choose uh, how it is um, attached. And so I will use uh, hinge hinge. So hinged in in the bottom at the bottom and hinged at the top of the wall. Um, yeah, so this is my input for the, let's say, 2D um, calculation of the slabs. And then, um, yeah, I could start to calculate the internal forces. This would need, a, let's say, half a minute or one minute. So I will save this um, time and switch over to a to structure where I've already calculated the the internal forces. Um, yeah, and then you get results like, let's say, uh, commonly for the statical analysis in RFM, you get internal forces and um, and deflections. But you have also an option I can show it where you could choose. Um, 
what kind of um, results you want to look at. So there are the common um, results from the 3D calculation, and there are the results for this, let's say, separated um, slabs. Um, so this is um, these are the results which are which we use then for the concrete design. Yeah, I also will show um, another point. The program, um, as I mentioned, uh, calculates the walls here um, connected via uh, rigid diaphragm and the um, floors like, yeah, let's say separated 2D uh, positions. And it also calculates um, some load transfer in a based on a submodel which is calculated in the background and here you could see if i go to the uh, uh, navigator display and the surfaces i can have here an, an option loads from distributed surface so now i see the loads as i um, defined them as surface load but i can show them also um, um, how the program um, distributes the load the loads based on the sub model calculation. So I see how this uh, surface load is um, distributed into the single parts of the structure. Yeah. So this is our uh, let's say basic uh, or these are our basic results um, which we use um, for the concrete design. And now I will um, start with the concrete design. And in the first step, I would like to um, calculate the required reinforcement. Um, I already um, activated the, the concrete design add-on. The input for the concrete design um, you could find in, like I would say, three main areas. There's some, uh, there's an entry here in the navigator concrete design, and there are, um, for example, the um, the configurations with all the settings for the um, for the design checks, and also there's here an entry for types for concrete design um, with input for the uh, surface reinforcement, for example, um, and then there's also here in the table this point concrete design where you could choose which objects you would like to uh, you would like to design and also which um, loads or design situations you would like to use and so on so I will start um, or I will uh, do the uh, concrete design for this slab in the middle here so I show only this Slab, I will turn off the results and take a look from the top side. Um, yeah, in the beginning, uh, I will only uh, design these two um, surfaces. So I will turn off the members and the nodes um, for punching or with punching. And I select here these two surfaces. And then um, I see here that they are at the moment um, not valid or deactivated. And the reason um, is that uh, there is some input missing for the surf surfaces themselves. So this is the, let's say, third area for the input. Um, the objects I, I've selected here for the, for the design, um, in these objects I have also a concrete related input. So this is here. It begins here with the register, uh, register um, concrete cover, and then the following uh, registers. So I can do here the input for the concrete cover. I could use it based on the uh, on the standard automatically, or I could define it, uh, or I could use it uh, user defined. Then I have here the settings regarding reinforcement direction. So um, 
by default settings, the uh, first reinforcement direction is always located in the local X direction of the surface. I keep here everything as it is. And then I go to surface reinforcement. And here I have to do an input. Um, it is necessary to define a, re uh, a reinforcement or a surface reinforcement here. Um, it is not necessary to do it uh, absolutely accurate, but the program needs um, some diameter for the calculation, for example, uh, and it also needs some input um, to uh, um, to the uh, to uh, for the access for the reinforcements because um, these inputs are influencing the effective depth or the inner lever for the um, concrete calculation. So here. I start with, um, let's say, some basic reinforcement. I define a mesh, Q424, um, at the top bottom side for these two surfaces. And here I can see what the program um, then uses as an existing reinforcement. And I say, OK, or apply, both possible. And in the background, I see that uh, the dialog is a bit in the, in the background, I see that, it, uh, that the uh, surface is switched from not valid to to design. Yeah. So I will close the dialog. And here in the in the next register, design configurations, I have the related um, configurations for the um, for the design. So the ULS and SLS um, configuration. And then the last register is about the deflection. This part I will show later. So I will um, open the ultimate configuration and the visibility configuration. First, the ultimate configuration. Here I can do um, settings regarding um, the ULS design, um, for example, regarding minimum reinforcement, regarding um, shear capacity or shear check uh, and so on. This is uh, default. Um, these settings are, let's say, um, related for slab um, design. So I keep everything as it is and close it. Um, and then I will open the visibility configuration. It's yeah quite similar. I have settings regarding the um, SLS design checks or uh, for the SS uh, calculation. Here I would like to turn off the uh, steel stress uh, analysis um, because it's not necessary um, in each case. Um, I also will um, adapt here the setting for the test stress distribution for the effects due to restrain. So I will use bending restrain because, um, yeah, I know I, I have here a, a slab and the program has some automatism or automatic function uh, to take to, to determine the um the stress distribution based on the um on the load um but this is uh, not necessary if you you uh, if you know what kind of um um restrain you would like to consider and i know that i would like here to consider bending restrain. And at least I will deactivate the deflection analysis. This is uh, an option I will use later. Then I have here this option, um, which is uh, activated uh, by default settings, um, that the program increases the uh, required reinforcement automatically also for the SLS. And here you have summarized um, for which uh, which design checks um, are used. So I keep this option on because this is my first step. I would like to um, calculate the required reinforcement. So now the input for um, is done. Um, and I could start the calculation. For the uh, required reinforcement, and yeah, 
as mentioned, the, the program now calculates uh, the required reinforcement for the ULS in the first step and then um, for the uh, SLS. And this is yeah, one way how you could work with the program. So this could be, uh, let's say, a step how you, how you uh, handle your structures um, by calculating the, the required reinforcement. Uh, when it is calculated, you have here um, in the result navigator for the concrete design, you have here this point reinforcement and then uh, you could have, have a look at the required reinforcement at the top side in the first and the second direction and at the bottom side also in the first and second um, direction. Um, yeah, at this point it would be theoretical possible to document uh, the results and then you have your concrete design <coughs> but you could um, do also an a bit more let's say detailed calcula uh, calculation and you could define um, the existing reinforcement a bit more detailed especially um, if you later want to use the deflection calculation um, it could be uh, good to define the um, the existing reinforcement more um, accurate, but also if you would like to do design checks for crack ride and so on, um, or if you use this upper part of the design checks, these are done based on the existing reinforcement, and it is possible to define this existing reinforcement more detailed and this. I would like to show now, um, but first I would switch here from required reinforcement. There's also another option, not covered reinforcement, with, which uh, shows the uh, uh, difference between um, the existing reinforcement, which is our, our uh, between the provided reinforcement, which is um, uh, the four point to four, uh, to four square centimeter, and then I could use here this uh, difference. So I see where this uh, mesh, uh, which I've chosen as basic reinforcement, does not cover um, the required reinforcement. So yeah, and based on this, I will do the um, an input for the existing reinforcement. But first, I would like to um, freeze these results because I would like to use them via input. There's an option here in in the input data that I could say if I change here something in for the input like um, the reinforcement, uh, the program should not uh, recalculate, it should keep the old results because I could use them uh, via input and then when the input is done, I could uh, activate this um, again and the program recalculates. So I turn this off and then I will define the reinforcement and I will start with the reinforcement um, above, uh, above the supports. And I have to go to the navigator and here's surface reinforcement. There's also our, uh, already our existing mesh basic reinforcement. I create a new surface reinforcement. And this time not uh, um, for the whole uh, surface. I would like to use a free rectangular um, reinforcement only at the top side um, assigned to these two surfaces. And with um, diameter 20, and also here in the uh, transverse, uh, or for the transverse um, reinforcement, also uh, diameter 20. Um, and then I would not do the input. Uh, I don't want uh, want a direct input uh, of the of the rebar spacing. I would use the uh, automatic um, function or the um, automatic design of the existing reinforcement 
So if I click here, um, auto, the program um, automatically determines the um, the rebar spacing. So I have to give a minimum and a maximum value. Uh, I keep the default settings and an increment. I use a bit um, larger increment, five centimeter, and I do the same for the other direction and say okay. So now um, the program um, automatically determines the rebar spacing based on the um, required reinforcement. I will do the input. I have here the register uh, direction and location. I will do the input based on a center and then um, side length for A and B. I took a look before um, about the size of the area. So it's about two and a half meter. And then I click here on the middle of the the support, say apply. And then yeah, it should show the reinforcement. Um, I could also, or, um, to define the other uh, reinforcement areas, I could here use the copy function. So it keeps the uh, uses exactly the same um, settings, and then I only have to change the, the location here. I can click Apply. And again, for the other one, here, Apply. And then it, uh, yeah, I have um, defined um, the, uh, the other reinforcement areas very easy. There's also an Alternative way um, the surface reinforcement um, is like uh, every other object in in our firm here it behaves yeah like a uh, like a surface or something or like a free load. I can um, select the um, surface reinforcement and use the copy function and say for example create a copy or create two copies. And then I could pick here my vector from start to end point and say, okay. And then the program um, copies the reinforcement um, two times. Um, yeah, I have here in the, in this area also some some supports where also there is also some not covered reinforcement here in direction two and I guess in the upper corner there, uh, there's also a small um, area here I would also like uh, would also like to use this um, reinforcement for the for the support so I copy it another time um, for this point and for this point and for this point and say okay. So now I have defined for all um, areas where not covered reinforcement uh, is above the support. I have uh, defined this uh, reinforcement here. Um, it's not necessary to, um, to have for each uh, reinforcement area two directions. So for example, here, these three upper um, columns, there is the re uh, not covered reinforcement in direction one, but not in direction two. And also here, uh, there is no uh, required reinforcement or not covered reinforcement in direction two. I would like to use this and show how you could adapt the, the reinforcement. So I could um, choose this uh, five areas here or this five reinforcement and say I would not like I, I, I don't want to use the second direction and say okay. Um here it is the same. Uh, I forgot this. Here it's the same. There's also not an a not covered reinforcement in direction two. And here it's uh, for these two it's vice versa. There is um no um Reinforcement in direction one, or the not covered reinforcement is zero in direction direction one, but in direction two there's some not covered reinforcement. 
so therefore I could also adapt these two. It's a little bit different. Um, here I have to um, switch off also the transverse reinforcement, but I have to say that the first direction is not um, in direction one, it is in direction two, and say okay. And then I have uh, everything adapted uh, as I would like. Mm, there is some reinforcement here in between these um, um, supports. So I will create another um, area at the top side um, here. I say new surface reinforcement, be rectangular. Choose these two surfaces and uh, this time I define the um, diameter and distance. I would like to use diameter 12 at 10 centimeter here also for the transverse um, reinforcement and I have to check only at the top side. And this time I use uh, this um, definition by corner points. So I have um, I have in crit uh, a crit in the in the background. So I could here um, choose every half a meter. This crit could could be also adapted. I use the crit with half a meter. So I can define it here graphically, like this, for example. And say OK. And then I have a. Oh, it looks. Moment. I did some mistake here. It's always. You could always use the graphic uh, to check if the input uh, was correct. Um, and then I have to define also two reinforcement areas for the uh, bottom side. There's an, an area here where a not uh, covered reinforcement occurs and then also here in this area in direction two mainly, also a small reinforcement in direction one. So I define for these uh, areas also an existing reinforcement. I could, this time I use the copy function again and copy my last reinforcement and switch to bottom. And then for the first one, it's, I would like to use diameter 10 every 15 centimeter. And in this area, let's say from here to here, and say apply. I could check it. Yeah. And then another area or another uh, reinforcement at the bottom side here. And, um, in first um, direction, I would use 10 um, at 30 centimeter, and in the second, 10 at 10 centimeter, like this. And I use it for this whole area here and say OK. And then I have, uh, I'm ready with my with my input. Yeah. So I could. Um, now start the calculation again and with starting the calculation um, the program will automatically adapt the reinforcement so i go to the input data again and i switch off this option Let's say okay the results are deleted i could um, calculate again um, and now i see that uh, there's uh, changed a little bit for the calculation. I have now two concrete entries. The first calculation is the required reinforcement. So with changing the reinforcement, there's also there could be also uh, changes regarding um, the inner leather or the effective depth, uh, depending on the defined reinforcement. And the second um, calculation is uh, the automatic design of the existing reinforcement. So um, in this step, um, the program automatically um, decreases um, the uh, um, the rebar distance um, till this point that the required reinforcement is 
um, covered. There could be also the case that there is no solution, but then you should see the uh, minimum um, distance. So in such case, you maybe have to adapt then the, the diameter, for example. So now the uh, calculation is done, and I could have a look at the results. So maybe I start with the, here yeah, maybe at the top side with the um, not covered reinforcement. So now the not covered reinforcement is zero, and also in the second direction is zero. So in this areas where I used, or at this side where I used this automatic reinforcement, um, everything is um, covered. I could also have a look at now at the design checks, for example, at the uh, ultimate limit uh, state for the top side. Maybe I can, it does not look that good. If I have this um, reinforcement turned on, I can uh, switch it off here. If I switch off types of concrete design. So I, I see here the uh, design check for the UAS. Everything is below one, so everything is fulfilled um, at the top side here, both directions. I could also have a look at the serviceability, um, at the um, crack right, um design check, for example. I could uh, here have a look at the ratio. The ratio is uh, smaller than one for the top and bottom side. I ca uh, could have a look at the um, directly at the um, crack right. So here I see the crack right uh, in value in millimeter here. Uh, at the top side, the resulting um, crack right. And also at the um, bottom side. So this is, uh, yeah, this should show, uh, should show the possibilities I have here with this automatic um, reinforcement. And if I say, okay, um, the program determined this, um, this distance, I can see it, see it here, the, the value which was calculated, the program um, calculated this value and I would like to use it um, as an input now, from now on. I could select all these, I, I could do it for, uh, uh, for each, um, reinforcement separately by clicking here this uh, arrows, but I could also select the whole um, all these uh, reinforcement areas where I use this automatic function and say here um, with this function um, it should use the data uh, the data mined value for the rebar spacing in the input, and then I could say okay. And from now on, um, it does not uh, need to recalculate um, the automatic function um, in the next uh, calculation yeah, or for following calculations. So um, this is ready. The, uh, the definition of the existing reinforcement is, uh, is ready. Um, now, at the, as a last step, I would like to do the deflection calculation and also the uh, punching design. Um, I will uh, check at the beginning the input for the deflection calculation. There's, oh, I have to do it separately, one moment. There's an input here um, for, uh, for this uh, surface. Um, regarding the deflection, um, I could here select the surface type um, this surface is double supported, um, and I have here a reference length um, 8.2 uh, meter, which is the distance between uh, the corner here at the at the edge and here at uh, the column here at the edge and the column here in the middle. And then I have this value also for for this uh, canter, for this balcony here, for this cantilevered area. And then I have surface type cantilever and uh, reference thing length 2.65, which is the distance here. Um, 
I also have to um, activate or check um, if the creeping and shrinkage is activated. So this is a setting or an option which I find in the material. It's a material-related um, uh, property. So if I uh, open the uh, material here, I have an additional register time-dependent properties of concrete. Um, and here I could uh, activate creep and shrinkage, which is used then for the deflection calculation. Here I also see the input for the um, creeping and shrinkage. This is um, regarding our the calculation I showed today. This is um, for visually this, this creep coefficient diagram is um, for visualization. Yeah, based on a, a on one thickness. So creeping and shrinkage is activated. The reference length for the uh, limit value for the deflection is defined. And then I could check the serviceability uh, configuration. I can um, now activate the limit um, limitation of deflection or the deflection analysis. Here I see um, the different uh, different uh, limit values based on um, on the type uh, of the uh, support of the surface, or uh, yeah, if it is a cantilever or if it is uh, both uh, side supported surface, it uses different uh, limit values. And then I will uh, in this step also deactivate the. Uh, uh, determination of the longitudinal reinforcement again because we have once now uh, defined our existing uh, existing reinforcement I don't have to use this calculation again so this um, saves a little bit calculation time and I say okay of course the results have to be deleted but before I recalculate I also would like to activate some nodes for the punching. So here, let's say these three nodes uh, or three uh, point here, points at the at the columns should be used for punching. Punching design is also like the surface design. You have the object with the input, which is for punching the node. Um, if I click on the node, here you find that punching design is performed, and then you have a related uh, ultimate configuration. I can have a look again at the ultimate configuration. And with uh, selecting some nodes for the design here, um, I get this additional register for punching, and here you could find uh, every single options for the for the design or how this punching load should be determined. There yeah, are a lot of different settings. I would keep it, I keep everything as it is here. I would like to use the default settings. And then I um, recalculate the again, but I use this calculation time and switch back and will do an, a short explanation um, regarding the deflection calculation we use here in, in for our concrete design. Um, this is a def the deflection calculation according Eurocode uh, 7.43 or chapter 7.43 and this is based on a distribution coefficient theta um, and here's explained how the calculation would work without tension stiffening. This would mean the deflection um, is based um, on, a, on the consideration of a correct state. So the program calculates a stiffness um, for uncorrect state, which is this uh, function here, and correct state. And uh, so we have a stiffness for uncorrect state and a stiffness for correct, or let's say fully correct state um, here. And depending on if the element cracks or not, it uses the uncracked or the cracked, um, the value for the uh, uncracked or cracked uh, stiffness. The 
stiffness uh, itself depends on different parameters like uh, existing reinforcement. That's, this is also the reason why I um, um, did here some, let's say, more accurate input for the existing reinforcement. It depends also on the plate thickness, um, also on the height of the compression zone, material parameter, and of course also creeping and shrinkage. Um, I have also the option to use uh, the calculation including tension stiffening. This is our default setting, so um, if you do not change it, the program automatically always cal uh, calculates the deflection, including uh, considering the effect um, of tension stiffening. So this means there is not only the completely uncracked or completely cracked state, uh, there is uh, a state in between. So the deflection um, is calculated based on a uh, on effective stiffness. This means uh, this um, distribution coefficient could not be only zero or one. It could have um, every value between zero and one. And based on this um, distribution coefficient, the stiffness is determined. So um, uh, depending on this coefficient, uh, co uh, coefficient and this um, coefficient is um, is depending on the um, load and the high of the load. So um, we have a we have a state between uh, completely cracked and um, uncracked here. Yeah. So this is our default setting. The deflection calculation, by the way, and also the punching design are uh, included in the uh, um, often six concrete uh, design, so there is no um, separate uh, or special add-on. Um, it is part of the concrete um, design. So now the calculation is finished, and I have here in, for the design checks, I have an additional entry um, for the deflection calculation. So I could have a look at the ratio, then uh, yeah, I see the the ratio uh, for the deflection calculation, but I could also have a look at the deflection value itself. And here it says I have um, yeah 4.6 centimeter deflection here, um, which would mean um, that the deflection would be not okay for this uh, situation. It would be a bit too large, so. There are different ways how to handle it. Um, one possibility would be um, to increase the thickness of the slab. Maybe there's also an option to reduce some some uh, weight here in this area. Um, of course, there are also the um, longitudinal reinforcement could be increased. Or I would say, um, I would uh, consider a hock for the form work here, so uh, that I um, um, that I have a hock in the in the direction um, in the upper direction um, for the form work uh, form work to um, yeah that they cover this uh, deflection. Um, yeah, I also could have uh, a look, um, or I could. Yeah, let's say compare the deflection um, a bit. Here I have the deflection um, for the concrete design. I could also have a look again at um, the uncracked um, the, the, the value for the deflection for the uncracked um, state. If I switch back here to statical analysis, quasi permanent load, and I, here I have the nine millimeter, and then compared I have the 46 millimeter which is from the factor it, it, it's, um, it seems plausible um, I could also have a look at the a closer look at the uh, deflection results in the design check so if I uh, for example use here um, or if I take a look at the at this point here at the deflection calculation, I can have a look at the detailed calculation with all the intermediate values. So 
the whole program is not a, a black box. You see every calculation step here, also for the uh, deflection calculation. I could um, have a look at, for example, um, let's say the calculation in uncracked state, in cracked state, um, all the stiffness values. If you uh, would like to have a closer look, this is uh, the showing these uh, design check details is possible for all um, design checks which are calculated in the program, not only for the deflection calculation, also for crack wide and so on, also the US um, calculation or the punching design and so on. Yeah, um, in the last point, I would like to have also a look at the punching design. So if I um, used, or if I, uh, yeah, if I use the punching design here, I have also results on nodes where I could, for example, have a look at the required reinforcement for a node, like um, here, required re reinforcement at the top side of the program. Um, with the default setting, it always um, tries to increase the longitudinal reinforcement to uh, to cover um, the, the punching. I, but I could also use then uh, the existing um, longitudinal reinforcement. And if the existing reinforcement is not enough, the program will um, um, calculate uh, required reinforcement for punching. Um, maybe this um, to show, or to have, uh, have a small look uh, into the future and the upcoming features. Um, one next step, um, which will be released in the program, will be the punching reinforcement. I uh, have prepared here a, a small um, example <coughs> um, how it will or how it could look in the in, in the future. So if I have here, for example, um, a required reinforcement at one uh, point. I could um, take a look at the required reinforcement at this node, and then I see um, um, how much uh, required, uh, uh, how much reinforcement uh, uh, is required in which distance. I could also have a, a look at the details and, for example, see um, uh, how high or what number of uh, link legs I would need. So here, for example, it is 11, so I, to cover it, I probably need 12. Um, and then I could define an, a punching reinforcement. So here, this is um, in the types for concrete design, there will be an additional point uh, in, the, in the future, in the upcoming versions. Um, with punching reinforcement, and I could create here new punching reinforcement. Um, I keep here everything as it is, but I have to choose the node where the punching reinforcement should be applied to. And then I um, could use here the number of perimeters and uh, number of legs in each perimeter. Um, here you see that there will also be uh, an automatic function in the in the future. Now for this example, I will do it manu manually. So number of perimeters, let's say three, and number of legs in the perimeter 12, and then um, the distance between uh, the support and support phase and one um, should be smaller. I guess uh, should be smaller than uh, 0.107. So I would say 0 0.1 should work. And then uh, the difference to the next is something about um, 11 centimeter. And then I say, okay, of course it needs to recalculate. And then I see here the, um, the reinforcement and I could recalculate the results. 
and now I see that the design um, ratio is fulfilled. So everything works here for the punching design with this defined punching reinforcement. Yeah, this should be just, a, let's say, small uh, look into the future at the end. Um, and with this point, I will hand over to Alexander and he will give you an, an overview about upcoming features. Thank you, Adrian, for the presentation. Before I will start with an overview of uh, the coming features, um, I want to give some questions to you, which mm -hmm. was asked during the webinar, and I think these questions would be also interesting for everyone. Um, the first question was um, about the deflection calculation. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it possible to consider the damage of the, the crack formation from a real design situation and calculate with the stiffness the deflection for the quasi-permanent loads? Maybe so, you okay. can show it in, this, in the program. It, I guess it's probably related this, to this um, option. So if you would like to calculate the correct state, um, not from the quasi-permanent, but from the, let's say, real um, um, load situation, you could use now in uh, RFM6, is, it, it, this is possible to have this uh, correct state detection here. So as default, the program normally calculates with the quasi-permanent load, it calculates the correct state, and then it calculates the deflection. But it is also possible to calculate the correct state um, from the envelope from all uh, visibility design situations. So like for the um, characteristic combination, uh, the program uh, checks in the beginning if uh, an element cracks with the, um, with the characteristic combination, and then it calculates um, the, the distribution coefficient, uh, coefficient theta um, based on this load. And then the load uh, or the deflection itself is then calculated uh, with the quasi-permanent um, load. So, I, yeah, so to answer, mm -hmm. this, this should be possible, yeah. Okay. And uh, one question more, what I would like to highlight is um, uh, you designed now one, one slab in the building. And mm -hmm. the question was how to define the surface reinforcement for the remaining slabs of the building. What is here the recommend approach? Yeah, um, there are different possibilities. Um, one easy way would be I switch, uh, I turn off the, uh, turn on the reinforcement again. One possibility it, it acts like um, with, with, with uh, some kind of projection. Um, so you could normally, um, if you would like to use the same reinforcement um, for the other slabs, you could um, select this slabs and just uh, assign the reinforcement also to the other um, slabs, like here, like this. Okay. Of course, uh, the results have to be uh, deleted then. This is one. Ah, oh, no, it, 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 they don't have to. Uh, to be deleted, they have to be deleted when I choose also the surfaces uh, uh, for the design. So this is one possibility. Another another possibility would be to copy all these um, um, surface reinforcement and then assign them to the other um, slabs. So in case you do not have exactly the same reinforcement, but some kind similar reinforcement, you could copy the reinforcement and then adapt it um, for the other. So this is uh, possible and should be quite easy, yeah. Okay, okay. super. Thank you for the explanation. Um, I would like now to come to the to an overview of our current development projects uh, and take the chance to give you an outlook to our out upcoming new features for the reinforced concrete design. For this, I will take the monitor 
so I hope now the right monitor is shown to you. Yes. Okay, so the first feature which will come really soon is the definition of the punching reinforcement. It was already presented by Adrian, so I will go directly to our next feature. Um, the automatically layout of the provided member reinforcement. With this feature, it will be possible to determine the number or the diameters of the rebars in a member automatically by the software. So generally, it will work in the same way like the today shown la layout of the surface reinforcement and it will be really a nice feature. The next feature which I want to present to you is a very big development in our company. the so physically and geometrically nonlinear analysis of reinforced concrete. We have here really uh, a completely new concept and um, with this new concept, the calculation is directly implemented in the final element calculation of, of our frame. So it is possible to use the nonlinearity of the reinforced concrete together with other nonlinear materials or, for example, other add ons uh, like the nonlinear pushover analyze uh, and so on. This is one of the biggest improvements in comparison to RFM5, where the nonlinear reinforced calculation was an isolated calculation in the add on RF concrete surfaces or RF concrete members for the participants who uh, work already with RFM5. Further, it will be possible to define individual stress strain diagrams for the concrete or the reinforcement. So uh, it is not only with fixed stress strain diagrams according to some standards, we can really work here with individual stress strain diagrams. The time dependent material properties like grip and shrinkage will be available by two methods. On the one hand, with the modification of the Young's module, the so called EEM method, which we used already in RFM5. And on the other hand, we will use uh, so called Kelvin Maxwell chains together with the add on time dependent analysis. With this new development, it will be possible to consider in the add on construction stages also the time dependent material properties of the concrete. And in the new development of the uh, nonlinear deformation calculation, it will be also possible to consider the tensile stiffening by the concrete tensile strength. Um, for example, the method uh, according to Quast, which was also in a question today in the chat. To summarize it, with this new development of the nonlinear reinforced concrete analyze, it will be really possible to design uh, structures in the futures in RFM6, which was not possible in RFM5. So this will be really a big topic and we're looking forward to release it uh, in this year. The next topic in our development is the design of the shear walls and also of deep beams. Uh, which will be automatically calculated or generated, you know, calculate automatically generated in the add-on building model. Uh, Adrian showed already the building model, uh, how it works with the load transfer. And with this building model, it will be also possible to generate automatically shear walls and deep beams as a design object. And these objects will be then directly designable in the add-on concrete. It will be a simplification for you. Further, our team is working on the seismic design according to the Eurocode 8. Last year, we already released the design of reinforced frames. It means the ductility, the constructive rules, and the capacity checks like strong column, weak beam are already available in RFM6. Now we are working on the required reinforcement for the rules of the capacity design. Um, and parallel, we are 
working on the design of seismic walls and coupling beams. In the image on the right side, you can already see um, our first draft from the input of the diagonal elements or diagonal reinforcement in the coupling beam, uh, which will be then used in the seismic design. The next project, which will also released in uh, 2024, is the fire design. Uh, for the fire design, we already released last year, at the end of last year, the design with the table approach, according to the chapter 5 from the Eurocode 2, for columns and beams. And the design checks for walls and slabs will be really released, released soon. It is in the uh, final testing state. And currently, we develop the fire design according to the zone method from Eurocode 2. And for this, uh, we developed our own thermal analysis of sections. And uh, you can see on the right side some uh, ISO lines or the results of, of this thermal analysis, for example, after 90 minutes. Finally, I want to mention one of our high priority development projects, uh, the new add-on concrete foundations. With this add-on, it will be possible to design single foundations. Um, currently, the geotechnical design checks according to Eurocode 7 are almost implemented, and we are working now on the calculation of the required reinforcement according to Eurocode 2 and uh, also for the graphical user interface. Um, this add-on will be uh, also available or released this year for you. So uh, as you can see, this year 2024 will be very exciting for the reinforced concrete design. Uh, we will release many things, and if you want to book a free online appointment, you can press here on the on this link on the right side, or, or scan here the QR code, and then you will come to our website, and you can uh, ask for an online appointment. I will go now to our website. So you will find the today's webinar on our website www.lubal.com under news and events and webinars. If we go down, um, here you see the upcoming uh, webinars, which will be the next weeks. For example, the connection with circular hollow sections in RFM6 or the design of masonry structures in RFM6, I think very interesting topics for you. And if we go down, we will found our two days webinar, the calculation of reinforced concrete slabs in RFM6. And if we go to the website, then you will found the recording, I think tomorrow here. Um, and also the used structures and files will be here for downloading. When the recording is finished, you will receive automatically an email from us with the link to this page. So um, it is not necessary to, uh, to remember it. You can use the link in the email and uh, come directly to the webinar site. So this should be all from my side. I want to say thank you for your attention. I say thank you to Adrian for his nice presentation and also thank you to Juliane for answering the questions. I wish you a nice afternoon. Uh, stay healthy. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.